Hello everyone, this is Etho. Today I have another tech video for you guys. Uh, I'm going to be showing you an, un an unfinished game I was working on, and I've abandoned this project actually. I haven't worked on it in over a year now, but uh, I'll just uh, show you it. Maybe it'll be interesting to you. I'm going to dedicate this video to Mr. C Sharp Programmer, because he seems to like these uh, tech videos the most. Um, but yeah, it's a tile-based platforming game. This is the first tile-based game I've ever made. Before that, the only type of collision detection I really ever did was uh, by pixel. So this one does by tile, and it uh, turned out pretty good. The actual physics and game engine turned out pretty good. Uh, the game itself, uh, not not really there's not really any game here uh, this is just a test level for testing out any changes I made to the code and to the tiles and the player and stuff like that uh, this project started as an experiment and I just kept adding to it there's no real clear direction to it which is kinda why I never made any type of game out of it really it's just a platforming engine really uh, but yeah, I'll give you a little bit of information about it. I'm this uh, little white dude here, this robot guy. He is inspired from Eve from Wally. -E. That's why they kind of look similar. I would have liked to make a human character, but I just can't draw too well, so I ended up doing something a little simpler with no moving parts. Um, Let's see, he has kind of Super Mario Brothers physics to him. Uh, if you hold down A when you jump, you jump pretty high. He can jump over five tiles high. If you just tap A, he jumps low. So the longer you hold A, the higher he'll jump is the way it works, kind of like Super Mario Bros. And also, like Super Mario Bros, uh, I should be saying Mario, otherwise I'm going to get flamed, but I don't really care. Uh, also, like Super Mario Bros, you can change your directions in mid-jump, kind of, which is which is pretty good. The physics is pretty good in this. It's very smooth. Uh, so also, he can shoot and aim and stuff with this red cursor thing. kind of like that. This guy over here that's moving around is an enemy with no sprite. He's just going back and forth. If I get close to him, he'll hurt me. And we can shoot him. I have ho oversized uh, bullets in this just for a placeholder. They weren't a finished looking sprite. Like I said, I can't really draw too well. Um, maybe I'll explain some of the tiles in this. As I was making this, I kind of thought I would just keep adding more and more different types of tiles and enemies and stuff, and I would be able to make a really nice game out of it in the end, but that didn't really happen. But yeah, I'll, I'll explain some of the tiles here. So we have these ones that I'm standing on right now. As soon as you touch them, they start to disappear and when they disappear you fall through them and after a certain amount of time they reappear again so that's kinda cool uh, we have these A, B, X, Y tiles uh, you play this using the Xbox 360 controller it would be an Xbox indie game if it was ever finished and so these white ones if I press A down the A tile becomes transparent so you can jump through it. If I press B down, the B one becomes transparent and you can fall through it. That's how that works. So I thought that was kind of cool. I never saw that in any game before. And then we have these black ones which are the reverse. If you hold B down, the tile becomes solid. If you let go of B, you fall down type thing. Uh, these are springs which aren't set up at the moment. 
Uh, we have magnets above me. If you hold down A, you stick to them. And you can move around like this and shoot and stuff. If you let go of A, you fall. And you can even do like a inverted jump from these things, which is kind of strange, like that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this, these X and checks are check points. If this was like a Super Mario Brothers game, if I went that direction. Oh, just a second, lagging. Yeah, if, if I made this like a Super Mario Bros. game where you go from point A to the end of the level, point A to B to finish the level, uh, I would have checkpoints, and when you touch them, it gets saved, so if you die, you return to the last touch checkpoint. These timer tiles that I'm in right now, they start counting down when, once the level starts, and after a certain amount of time, they become transparent like this. Um, in front of me is an info box type thing. If you go in front of it, a message pops up and your time stops. If you go away, it disappears. Then we have a bunch of collectibles like 1-ups and s points and health points, time, stuff like that. Uh, this here is like a booster tile pushes you in the direction the arrows are going. And this these vertical ones are uh, wall timing wall climbing tiles. If you jump and hold A on them, you can jump off them. Or if you just hold left, you kind of slowly slide down it. And you can jump up like that. And then we have spikes, which cause damage if you touch them. These ones are kind of airflow tiles that are pretty overpowered at the moment. These are disappearing tiles, which disappear and reappear at fixed intervals. Uh, these are exploding tiles. If you shoot them, they disappear, and then you can go through them. After a certain amount of time, they reappear again. Uh, more collectibles down here. The white exploding tiles, if you shoot them, they disappear, but they don't come back. And, yeah, that's all the tiles I have set up here. Um, mm -hmm. So, like I said, this didn't really have any direction to it. I kept flipping how I wanted to make the game, if I was going to make it like Super Mario Brothers, or you just run to the end of the level and get through all the tiles and enemies. Uh, then I thought maybe I'd make it like Super Metroid, where you collect stuff and power up and fight bosses. And then I thought maybe I'd make it like Cave Story. And all in all, I never did decide in the end. I think if I was to make a game like this, I'd make it a cross between Cave Story and Super Mario Bros. So you have gameplay like Cave Story with the the story and the bosses and collectibles and but combine it with like the great platforming experience of Super Mario Bros. because that's kinda what I felt Cave Story lacked. The jumps and that were really floaty in it and there weren't a whole lot of different tiles. All in all, I didn't like the platforming experience of Cave Story, but the actual everything else in the game was pretty good. Well, not pretty good. It was awesome. Cave Story is an awesome game. Uh huh. So that's this project. Uh, let's look at one other thing yet. And here we are again in my game. So. When my project got to the point that you saw there, I decided I should maybe reprogram it again from scratch because a lot of the code was messy because it started just as kind of an experimental project and I just kept adding to it. Uh, but the code was messy, there was a lot of dead code in it and a lot of stuff was unoptimized. So I took all the classes into a new a uh, new program and I went through them all 
got rid of anything I didn't need anymore, and I optimized whatever I could. So this is a new engine. It runs very smoothly. Uh, the major change with this one is the way I load the tiles. Uh, with the old engine, at first I experimented using XML files because that's kind of what people were, were recommending on forums and they did not work out well for me. They took a, it took me a long time to learn how to use them, a few hours, and when I made my first level using an XML file, it was only like a 300 by 300 tile area. The file ended up being over a meg in size and it took just about a minute to load, so at that point I got rid of XML and I switched over to using binary files. I learned about it, the binary reader and writer classes that work on the Xbox as well, so I was able to write binary files and they worked pretty good too. They were a lot smaller and they loaded fast. But in order to make binary files I needed to make a level editor for my game. Uh, well, for the XML one too I needed an external editor and so every time I added a new tile in my game, I needed to add it to my editor as well. And it just became a lot of work constantly updating it. So with this new engine, uh, the way it works is using PNG files. Basically, every PNG files are images. Uh, every pixel in the image represents a tile. Every tile can be up to 4 bytes. It's a 32-bit PNG file. Uh, and it works really well. So the tile positions are, cal are chosen by the position of the pixels in the image. And the tile identities and stuff are determined by the RGBA values for the pixel. So you can store up to 32 bits per tile using this method. It works well. The great thing is the PNG files are highly optimized. So what I have here is a 1000 by 1000 tile sized world. It just keeps going on and on. So there's a million tiles in this world. The PNG image is 1000 by 1000 pixels. It's only about 34 kilobytes in size. Uh, so to give you an idea why this is good, if you take a game like Terraria, if you create a large world in Terraria, the world becomes about 100 megs on your hard drive. And it takes a long time to save and load. Uh, in Terraria, the tiles are 5 bytes each, I saw. So... Uh, this is very similar in size, this world I'm in right now. I'm guessing a Terraria world on large is roughly a million tiles. And by comparison, this world is 34 kilobytes and a Terraria world is 100 meg. So those guys would have been pretty smart to use images as well, in my opinion. Or some type of optimization. Uh, these guys chasing me are enemies. First ones I tried adding. Uh, they basically just go around a point until you get close to them. Then they get mad at you and start chasing you. And they would be doing damage to me if I had it enabled. And they just keep following me until one of you gets destroyed. Uh, springs are enabled. These tiles here I call rope. You can walk across them. If you jump on them though, you fall through. Um, what else? I th everything else is pretty much the same in this engine. But yeah, it's a big, big, big world I have loaded here. And that's... Oh yeah, another cool thing about using images if you make a tile game. Uh, y you can use an image editor as your level editor. So you'll have 
your copy paste and all that ready for you. You can use brushes and make selections. You basically have the ideal level editor if you use image files using your favorite paint program and other people can use it as well. The only downside is it's not very user friendly. Uh, anyway, that's my game guys. Hope you liked it. And even though it's an abandoned project, a lot of the code I put into this can be reused in other projects if I want. Like if I ever make a game with a tile engine, I can u reuse all this code. So it's not a waste or anything like that, which is nice. And of course, I learned lots of things making this, so it was a fun little fun little game to play around with. But anyway, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you again next time.